All right, I haven't put my video making shoes on in a while, and I was trying to nudge Piero into making this video, but he hasn't done it. Uh, I guess this is going to have to be a response to somebody. I don't know who yet. Definitely not a Mendham because there's a 70% chance that he would just not accept it and block me. So let's get to the heart of the argument here about determinism, and I'm not going to bring into the matter any uh, quantum mechanics because it isn't necessary to. Although, well, I'm not going to do it directly. Let's start with a basic premise that atomic structure throughout the universe is the same and the function that derives from that structure is the same throughout the universe. I.e. a proton is a proton a neutron is a neutron, an electron is an electron. There is no difference between one and another. They are all the same. What this means is that if I go to a planet with an oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere and 25 pounds of pressure per square inch that is a billion light years away from here and I raise the temperature of water to 100 degrees centigrade, it will boil, just the same as it does here. I think most of the people I'm talking to in this video will accept that. Now, let's consider radioisotopes. They uh, occur naturally or they can be manufactured. <clears throat> Let's consider one in particular that I'm familiar with, radi um, iodine-125. I used to work with that a lot. If you have a defined amount of I-125, say 0 0.01 micrograms, just off the top of my head, and I don't really have these numbers fixed in my head, what, what these numbers would be, um, and you can say, assuming that it was newly manufactured, or you know how long ago it was manufactured, you can say, if I put a gamma counter here, I will get X number of counts per minute, because every, every so often a, an atom of iodine-125 is unstable enough because of the interaction of the strong and weak nuclear forces so that an electron will go crashing into a proton and it'll go pop giving off a gamma ray and turn into tellurium-125. And it does this in a very regular way. It has a 60-day half-life. No matter how much of it you have, it has a 60-day half-life. <clears throat> Which allows us to say if I have X amount of I-125 here and about a gamma ray, gamma ray counter here, I can get, I will get, Y counts of gamma rays hitting this detector in one minute. And you can go the other way. You can say, okay, I got Y counts of gamma rays hitting my detector in one minute, which means I have X amount of I-125 which is mostly what I did, because we weren't really interested in how much one I-125 there was. It was bound to something else that we did want to know how much of it, what there was, and we could use the molar relationship to determine that. In any case, <clears throat> if you go to the atomic level and you look at the individual atoms of I-125 in your sample, and you pick one to look at, it might go you know, within seconds of you looking at it, or it could just sit there, and sit there, and sit there, and sit there. And there's absolutely no difference between it and any other one. It's completely random. There is no way to predict if, when, one of these uh, disintegrations will occur. So, this immediately proves that we do not live in a deterministic 
universe. And in fact, the universe would not function if it were deterministic. Because if, if radio isotopes all went off at the same time, we'd be in big trouble. Or if we could predict when they go off, we'd be in big trouble. Because then, oddly enough, mathematically, we would not be able to have the kind of half-life determinacy that we have, and the structures would all be messed up. And I'm way off script here. It's one reason I don't like making videos anymore. I just can't keep what I was going to say in my head once I sit down to do it. Anyway. Um, oh, I had so much better plans for this video. Anyway. Let me anticipate an argument against this. You could speculate that we have multiverses for which there's no evidence other than mathematical evidence that I know of um, and, and the observation of things like virtual particles and stuff like that but we have no idea we have no physical evidence that there is any other universe or what goes on in that other universe you could speculate that there is a deterministic universe in which these radioisotopes coexist and that something is going on in that other deterministic universe that is causing the radioisotopes to, to do what they do, well, you can speculate, but that's all it is. You can also speculate that God decides which one will do what. Same thing, as far as I'm concerned. Or you could do pretty much the same thing and say, okay, there's a sixth or seventh dimension in which these things coexist, and there's something going on in that sixth or seventh dimension, and of course we know nothing about it, but that's deterministic, and it's causing the stuff to do what it does when it does it. And so it's really not, not random, it's deterministic because of what's going on in the 6th or 7th dimension. Well, as soon as you get there, and you observe what's going on, and can measure it, and come back with the results, and prove that that's a deterministic dimension, fine, I'll buy that argument. But until you do that, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't buy that. Um... Now, this nicotine kid was talking about coin toss, and I've heard this argument before. Was it a coin or dice? Doesn't matter. Coin toss, di dice toss, what have you. If you. He was saying that if you could measure all the positions and forces of all the atoms that were interacting with each other to produce that coin flip, once it left the hand, you could, or prior to its leaving the hand or whatever, um, that, that has its own problems. Uh, then you could always predict whether it would land heads or tail, or always predict what, what number the dice would, would land at being, or what have you. Um, no, that's not true because of what I was just saying about radioisotopes. Inside of that coin, or inside of those dice, are evenly distributed amounts of radioisotopes that are undergoing disintegrations. And when they do that, they give off energy, which gives them a little bit of kick under the Newtonian law of equal and opposite reactions. So once that coin leaves the hand, there could be very well a thousand radioisotopes going just enough to nudge that coin to be something other than what you would have predicted had you known all those forces. Besides which, if you could have measured all those forces in the first place, then you would meet any reasonable definition of God. So I think I've debunked determinism, <laughs> and um, I'll have to think about doing one on free will. We'll see.